Ever since people have traveled to faraway destinations for work or leisure, they've needed places to stay. And while many establishments tend to come and go, there are some that have made such an impact that they've been around for, in some cases, thousands of years. Join me for today's video. I'm traveling around the world to visit 15 of the greatest historic hotels. Starting with number 15, the Grand Hotel Excelsior Vittoria in Sorrento, Italy. The Grand Hotel Excelsior Vittoria in Sorrento is a world-famous luxury hotel that combines a rich history with classical elegance and modern luxury. It's positioned on a cliff overlooking the Gulf of Naples. This iconic hotel offers incredible views out across the bay, Mount Vesuvius, and the Isle of Capri, making it a popular destination for travelers looking for an unforgettable experience. It first opened in 1834 and has since been a landmark of Sorrento. The hotel has remained in the ownership of the Fiorentino family for five generations, and this long-standing stewardship has ensured that the hotel keeps its historic charm while continually updating its facilities. The hotel is made up of three historic buildings, each with its unique architectural and artistic details. These buildings are decorated with antique furnishings, frescoes, and elegant pieces that transport you back to a long-gone era. One of the best things at the hotel are the expansive Mediterranean gardens, covering an area of more than 215,000 square feet. It's a tranquil oasis filled with citrus groves, olive trees, and vibrant flowers. It's the perfect location to explore the many attractions of Sorrento and the surrounding region. It remains one of the most luxurious hotels, with 84 rooms and suites that are individually decorated, featuring high ceilings, large windows, and private balconies. Dining at the hotel is a treat, too, with the Michelin-starred restaurant, offering gourmet cuisine crafted from local seasonal ingredients, all with amazing views out across the sea. Number 14, La Lamunia, Marrakesh, Morocco. La Mamunia is one of the world's most famous luxury hotels, known for its significance, incredible architecture, and exceptional service. It's opened in 1923 and has become a symbol of Moroccan hospitality and elegance, and it's attracted the who's who of guests over the decades. The hotel's name is in honor of its origins, which date back to the 18th century. The site was originally part of the gardens of Prince Moulay Mamon, the son of the Sultan Mohammed ben Abdullah. Now, these gardens were a gift to the prince as a wedding present, and they've been meticulously preserved. The 20-acre gardens are a serene oasis filled with olive trees, citrus groves, and vibrant flowers. Its architecture and design are a blend of traditional Moroccan and Art Deco styles, and the hotel's initial design was drawn up by the French architect Henri Prost. The result is a fusion of intricate mosaics and hand-carved woodwork, creating an atmosphere of elegance and luxury. Throughout its history, La Mamunia has seen countless high-profile guests. Winston Churchill, a frequent visitor, described it as the most lovely spot in the whole world, and often used it as a retreat to paint. Other guests have included Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Charlie Chaplin, Marlene Dietrich, and more recently the likes of Elton John and Gwyneth Paltrow, showing that the hotel's allure is timeless. The rooms are, of course, on another level. And for food, there's a choice of several world-class restaurants from traditional Moroccan dishes to contemporary international options. The Moroccan restaurant in particular is a highlight, offering guests an authentic taste of the local cuisine in a beautiful setting. Number 13, the Savoy, London. The Savoy, which is on the Strand in London in the UK, is one of the world's most iconic hotels. Originally opened in 1889, it was the idea of Richard Doyle Cart, a theatrical impresario who wanted a hotel that would offer a never-before-seen level of comfort and luxury. It quickly became known for its elegance, innovation, and excellence, and would set new standards in hospitality. The Savoy was the first hotel in Britain to feature electric lights, electric lifts, and ensuite bathrooms with constant hot and cold running water. These set a new benchmark for luxury back then and attracted high-profile guests, including royalty, politicians, and celebrities. The hotel's design, with its opulent furnishings, marble bathrooms, and stunning public spaces, quickly earned it a reputation as the height of sophistication. Throughout history, the Savoy has been associated with numerous figures and events, from Winston Churchill, who frequently dined there, to Frank Sinatra, Marilyn Monroe, and Elizabeth Taylor. The American Bar at the Savoy, which is one of the oldest cocktail bars in London, became a popular spot for socialites and celebrities, further establishing the hotel's position as a cultural landmark. The Savoy's history is also closely linked with the arts. Claude Monet and James Whistler were among the guests who stayed at the hotel, finding inspiration in its views of the River Thames. 
The hotel's been featured in numerous films and literary works too, adding to its legendary status. Today, after more than a $250 million restoration over three years from 2007, the Savoy continues to be an example of a timeless elegance and forward thinking. Its restaurants offer exceptional dining experiences too, while its event spaces host some of London's most prestigious gatherings. Number 12. Nishiyama Onsen, Japan Holding the record of being the oldest hotel in the world, the Nishiyama Onsen Keunkan, which is nestled in the mountains of the Yamanashi Prefecture in Japan, first opened in 705 AD and has amazingly been operated by the same family for over 52 generations. Its founder was Fujiwara Mahito, the son of an aide to Emperor Tenji. Mahito chose the site for its natural hot springs, known for their healing properties, and built the inn to provide a retreat for weary travelers and samurai. The location, surrounded by lush mountains and near the Hayakawa and Yukawa rivers, offered a peaceful environment ideal for relaxation. Over the centuries, Nishiyama Onsen has welcomed many thousands of guests, including samurai, shoguns, and emperors. The inn's lasting appeal lies in its commitment to maintaining traditional Japanese hospitality, known as omotonashi, which emphasizes attentive, personalized service and a meticulous attention to detail. One of the big draws here is its onsen baths. The ryokan has access to an endless supply of hot spring water that comes from four different springs, and these mineral-rich waters, known for their benefits, feed into both indoor and outdoor baths. But just because it's old doesn't mean it's dated, though, as the owners have ensured that it's been continually updated to keep in line with modern expectations. It underwent significant renovations in 1997 and again in 2019 to update its facilities, with each guest room designed in a classic Japanese style featuring tatami mats, sliding shoji doors, and futon bedding. Also, the food here is something special, showcasing the rich flavors and seasonal ingredients in the region. Guests can enjoy kaiseki, a multi-course Japanese dinner where each dish is carefully prepared and presented, showcasing the ryokan's dedication to excellence. With such a long history and a commitment to hospitality, it's earned its own place in Japanese culture. The inn's ability to preserve its heritage while adapting to its changing times is why it's remained open for over a millennium, which is probably going to keep doing so for many years to come. Number 11. Raffles, Singapore Established in 1887, the Raffles Hotel in Singapore has been synonymous with colonial elegance and has played a significant role in the country's history. It's named after Sir Stamford Raffles, the founder of modern Singapore. The hotel was built by the Sarkis brothers, Armenian hoteliers who saw the potential of Singapore as a trading hub. They opened the hotel with 10 rooms and it quickly gained a reputation for luxury and impeccable service. Its location facing the beach and providing a panoramic view of the South China Sea made it the most sought-after retreat for travelers and the elite. Raffles Hotel was among the first buildings in Singapore to have electric lights and fans, and its architectural style is a fusion of neoclassical and tropical designed to accommodate the humid climate of Southeast Asia. The hotel's airy verandas, high ceilings, and gardens provide a cool and comfortable environment, making it a haven for guests. Throughout its history, it's welcomed an impressive list of guests, including writers, celebrities, and royalty. Rudyard Kipling, Somerset Maugham, and Joseph Conrad were among the figures who are said to have found inspiration within its walls. And the hotel is famously associated with the creation of the Singapore Sling, a cocktail invented by bartender Giam Tong Boon in 1915. Seen as so important, the hotel was declared as a national monument by the Singapore government in 1987, recognizing its architectural and historical significance. Today, it continues to hold up the traditions of the past across its 115 suites, each with period furnishings and modern amenities. Number 10. Hotel Adlon Kapinski, Berlin, Germany The Hotel Adlon Kapinski in Berlin is one of Germany's most famous hotels. The original one was opened in 1907 by Lorenz Adlon, a successful wine merchant and restaurateur. Adlon dreamed of a grand hotel that could rival the finest across Europe, and with its prime location near the Brandenburg Gate and its luxurious features, the Hotel Adlon quickly became a symbol of opulence and sophistication. From the beginning, the hotel was used by prestigious guests such as Emperor Wilhelm II, Tsar Nicholas II, Thomas Edison, Charlie Chaplin, and Marlene Dietrich. The hotel's ballrooms and dining halls would also host countless important events, making it a central hub for Berlin's high society. 
The hotel's fortunes changed drastically during the Second World War, however, and in April of 1945, as the war drew to a close, a fire, which was started by drunken Soviet soldiers, left the hotel in ruins. Only a small side wing survived and continued to operate as a facility for a few more years before finally closing in 1984. For decades, the once majestic Hotel Adlon remained a reminder of wartime devastation. With the reunification of Germany in 1990, Berlin underwent a significant redevelopment, and the idea of rebuilding the Hotel Adlon was put forward. In 1997, the new Hotel Adlon Kapinski opened its doors, rebuilt on its original site. The new design echoed the grandeur of the past, featuring marble floors, elegant chandeliers, and luxurious furnishings. Since reopening, it's once again become a prime destination for world leaders, dignitaries, and celebrities. In 2002, U.S. President George W. Bush stayed there and have been countless international conferences and galas. Today, it offers 385 rooms and suites, blending historical charm with contemporary luxury. Its renowned restaurants, such as the two Michelin star Lorenz Adlon Ezimir, provide amazing culinary experiences. And there's also a spa, grand meeting rooms, and a huge ballroom, making it a very popular venue for both leisure and business travelers. Number 9. Belmont Copacabana Palace, Brazil Since opening in 1923, the Belmont Copacabana Palace in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, has been a symbol of Rio's vibrant culture. The idea for it was first put forward by Brazilian President Epitacio Pessoa, who wanted to create a grand hotel that would put Rio de Janeiro on the map as a world-class tourist destination. The hotel drew inspiration from elegant hotels of the French Riviera, such as the Negresco in Nice and the Carlton in Cannes, blending with neoclassical and Art Deco styles. When this palace opened its doors on August 13, 1923, it was by far the largest and most luxurious hotel in South America, and it quickly gained a reputation for its accommodations, cuisine, and high levels of service. Its location on the Copacabana Beach with stunning views of the Atlantic made it a really picturesque place and a grand opening was attended by the elite of Brazil. Seen as the place to stay in Rio, the Copacabana Palace has welcomed guests from Hollywood stars like Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers, to political figures such as Princess Diana and Nelson Mandela. Its annual New Year's Eve celebrations and carnival balls are legendary, attracting thousands of revelers. In 1989, the hotel underwent a huge transformation when it was acquired by the Orient Express Hotels, and this marked the beginning of a new era for the place. Its new owners embarked on extensive renovations to restore the hotel to its former glory while updating its facilities to meet modern standards. The renovations included refurbishment of guest rooms and suites, the creation of a new dining venue, and the addition of a luxurious spa. Today, the Belmont Copacabana Palace is still the most prestigious hotel in the city. Its 239 rooms and suites are beautifully designed, blending classical charm with contemporary comforts. The hotel's restaurants, including the Michelin-starred Mi and the Italian eatery Cipriani, offer memorable experiences, while the iconic swimming pool surrounded by tropical gardens remains a focal point for those looking to relax. Number 8. The Imperial New Delhi, India the Imperial New Delhi, usually known simply as the Imperial, is located on Janpath, one of New Delhi's major roads, and has been one of the most iconic hotels in the city since opening in 1936. Built during the British colonial period, it was commissioned by SBS Ranjit Singh, a prominent real estate developer who wanted to create a grand establishment. The architectural design was drawn up by F.B. Blomfeld, a distinguished architect known for his works in colonial India, and included Victorian, Georgian, and colonial influences, resulting in an impressive structure. When it opened its doors in 1936, it was by far the most luxurious hotel in New Delhi, with grand columns, high ceilings, and expansive verandas, which along with its lush gardens and landscaped grounds created a sense of regal splendor. Following the end of the British Raj in 1947, the Imperial continued to maintain its status as a premier luxury hotel. Today, it offers over 230 rooms and suites, each retaining its historical grandness. The hotel's dining venues, such as the Spice Root, Daniel's Tavern, and the 1911 Restaurant, offer a range of culinary experiences, and the spa, health club, and event spaces further make it ideal for both leisure and business. Moving on to number 7, The Peninsula, Hong Kong The Peninsula, Hong Kong, often called the Grand Name of the Far East, opened on December 11, 1928, and was the first hotel under the Peninsula Hotel's brand. 
located in Kowloon. It's developed by the Kaduri family and operated by the Hong Kong and Shanghai Hotels Limited, soon becoming known as the most luxurious hotel in the region. It was built in response to creating demand for high-end accommodation in Hong Kong, and the location was chosen because it was near the terminus of the Kowloon-Canton Railway, making it an ideal stopover for travelers. From its earliest days, it attracted an elite clientele, including dignitaries, celebrities, and wealthy travelers. Its interiors, featuring marble floors, crystal chandeliers, and rich wood paneling exude an air of sophistication. And it added to this by famously adding a fleet of Rolls-Royce limousines in the 1970s. During the Second World War, it was requisitioned by the Japanese forces and used as a military headquarters. Surprisingly, though, during this time, the hotel's infrastructure remained largely intact, which allowed it to resume business in the years following the end of the war. In the following decades, it underwent several renovations and expansions to maintain its status as a top-tier hotel, including in 1944, the addition of a 30-story tower. This brought new guest rooms, suites, and a state-of-the-art facility, blending the hotel's historical charm with contemporary luxury. The hotel has retained its reputation for exceptional service and attention to detail to this day, and its restaurants such as the Gaddy's, the Veranda, and the Felix offer world-class culinary experiences. Also with a luxurious spa, a helipad, and an exclusive shopping arcade featuring high-end boutiques, it still sits at the top of what's a highly competitive industry in Hong Kong. Number 6. The Grand Hotel Europe, St. Petersburg, Russia the Grand Hotel Europe, which you'll find in the heart of St. Petersburg in Russia, first opened in 1875, and as well as being a luxurious place to stay, has found itself at the center of world events on a number of occasions. The site that it was built on has been associated with hospitality since early 19th century, originally being a coaching inn known as the European Hotel. Seeing the need for a larger establishment to accommodate the influx of international visitors to St. Petersburg, the hotel's owners began an ambitious project to transform it into a world-class luxury hotel. When it officially opened its doors in 1875, it quickly established itself as the premier accommodation in St. Petersburg. Its interiors featured amazing furnishings, intricate woodwork, and lavish chandeliers, setting a new standard for elegance. And it was the first hotel in Russia to offer modern conveniences such as electricity and running water. The Grand Hotel Europe has, throughout its history, welcomed guests like composers Tchaikovsky and Shostakovich, writer Maxim Gorky and dancer Anna Pavlova. And the hotel also served as a social and cultural hub, hosting grand balls, concerts, and political meetings. This began to change, though, during the Russian Revolution and the two world wars. During the Soviet era, it was nationalized and renamed the Hotel Europeskaya, serving various purposes, including being where the government officials and foreign dignitaries would change. Despite those changes, though, the hotel retained most of its splendor and continued to be a symbol of St. Petersburg. In the 1990s, following the collapse of the Soviet Union, the Grand Hotel Europe underwent extensive renovations to restore its former glory. Today, the Grand Hotel Europe has reclaimed its spot as the most prestigious hotel in St. Petersburg, and for those staying in the city, there's no better choice. Number 5. Grand Hotel Inglés, Madrid, Spain Grand Hotel Inglés in Madrid, in Spain, was established in 1886, and it's the oldest hotel in the city. It was founded by Agustin Ibarra, a successful businessman and built in a prime location to ensure it became a popular destination for high-profile visitors. When it first opened its doors, it set a new standard for luxury. The hotel had modern amenities that were revolutionary for the time, including electric lighting, central heating, and an elevator. The grand interiors featured plush furnishings, chandeliers, and intricate woodwork, which was unlike anything else available at the time. This soon led to the hotel being at the center of Madrid's vibrant cultural and social life. It was a hub for artists, writers, and intellectuals who spent time in the Barrio de las Estras, which was a neighborhood known for its literary and artistic heritage. Over the decades, the hotel has continued to evolve with the times and has undergone a number of renovations to update its facilities and enhance its offerings. In 2018, Grand Hotel Inglés underwent a comprehensive restoration that preserved its historical elements while incorporating contemporary design and modern amenities. Today, the hotel's 48 rooms and suites are wonderfully designed, featuring a mix of classic and contemporary design, and each room is equipped with state-of-the-art tech and luxurious facilities. The lobby bar and restaurant Lobo 8 offers an experience that celebrates Spanish cuisine with a modern twist, and the cocktail bar La Baito provides a chic and stylish setting for guests to unwind and enjoy the expertly crafted cocktails. Number 4. The Mandarin Oriental, Bangkok, Thailand 
The Mandarin Oriental in Bangkok is one of Thailand's most important hotels, with a legacy that dates back more than 140 years. It's located on the banks of the Chao Phraya River, and it's played an important role in cultural and social history of Bangkok. It first opened in 1876 as the Oriental Hotel, and was established by two Danish sea captains, Hans Niels Andersen and Peter Andersen, who recognized the need for a luxury hotel to accommodate the increasing number of Western visitors. The original structure was a modest wooden building, but it quickly gained a reputation for its high standards. By the turn of the century, the Oriental had become a popular choice among travelers, and in 1887, it was extensively renovated and expanded. This new building featured modern amenities and an elegant design, which helped cement its status as the premier hotel in the city. It hosted a number of famous guests, including authors Joseph Conrad and Somerset Maugham, and plenty more. In the 20th century, the Oriental continued to evolve, adapting to the changing times while sticking to its roots. During the Second World War, the hotel was occupied by the Japanese army, but it emerged from the conflict relatively unscathed. In the post-war years, the Oriental underwent some further renovations and expansions to meet the growing demands of international travelers. A turning point came in 1974 when it was acquired by the Mandarin Oriental Hotel Group. Under this new management, the hotel was renamed Marion Oriental Bangkok and underwent significant upgrades and enhancements. And now, with its 393 rooms and suites offering a perfect balance of traditional Thai decor and modern amenities, it's clear to see why. Even with the modern touches, the hotel's committed to preserving its cultural heritage, such as the author's wing in a historic part of the hotel, which pays tribute to the literary figures who once stayed there. Number 3. The Waldorf Astoria, New York One of the most famous buildings in the history of New York, the Waldorf Astoria originally began as two different venues, the Waldorf Hotel and the Astoria Hotel. The Waldorf was opened on March 13, 1893 by William Waldorf Astor on the site of his mansion at 5th Avenue and 33rd Street. Designed by architect Henry Janeway Hardenborough, it was the 13-story structure that set new standards for luxury and service. It featured innovations such as private bathrooms and guest rooms and electricity throughout the building, which were groundbreaking. Four years later, William Waldorf Astor's cousin, John Jacob Astor IV, built the Astoria Hotel next door. Opened on November 1, 1897 and also designed by Hardenborough, the Astoria was connected to the Waldorf by a corridor known as Peacock Alley. This connection effectively created a single hotel complex, the Waldorf Astoria, which became the largest and most luxurious hotel in the world, having 1,300 rooms. In the 1920s, the original Waldorf Astoria site was sold to make way for the construction of the Empire State Building, but this wasn't the end of the story. A new, even more impressive Waldorf Astoria was built on the Park Avenue between 49th and 50th Streets. This new hotel, designed by architect Schultz and Weaver, opened on October 1, 1931, and the 47-story Art Deco masterpiece was the largest and tallest hotel in the world at the time. Throughout the 20th century, the Waldorf Astoria remained at the forefront of luxury hospitality. It introduced new ideas such as room service, which became standard practice in the hotel industry, and the culinary excellence was further established with the creation of the Waldorf Astoria Culinary School, which has trained many renowned chefs. Number 2. Hotel du Crillon, Paris, France Hotel du Crillon in Paris, France is one of the world's most renowned luxury hotels, with a history that covers more than two centuries. The building that now houses the hotel was originally constructed in 1758 as a private residence by order of King Louis XV. The buildings were originally intended to house foreign ambassadors in ways that show off the grandeur and prestige of French architecture. The Count of Crillon acquired one of these buildings in 1788, and it remained in his family until it was transformed into a hotel. During this period, the building witnessed a number of significant events. It was from its balconies that Marie Antoinette looked at the view of the newly built equestrian statue of her husband, Louis XVI, and it also played a role during the French Revolution when the square was renamed and became the site of many of the protests. In 1909, the building was converted into a hotel. Named Hotel de Crillon in honor of its previous owners, the hotel quickly established itself as one of the finest. It retained much of its original 18th century architecture while incorporating the facilities expected by early 20th century guests. Its opulent interiors, including marble floors, crystal chandeliers, and ornate woodwork, made it a favored destination for royalties, celebrities, and heads of state. Throughout the 20th century, it continued to be a central hub of Parisian society and international diplomacy. 
During the Second World War, the hotel was requisitioned by the German army, serving as a headquarters for the occupying forces, and then after the war, it was restored to its former glory. The hotel was also the venue for the signing of the 1919 League of Nations Covenant, and it has welcomed countless dignitaries and famous people over the years, from Winston Churchill to Taylor Swift. In 2013, Hotel de Crillon closed its doors for an extensive four-year renovation aimed at modernizing it. The renovation, led by architect Richard Martinet and a team of interior designers, sought to restore the hotel's 18th century grandeur while incorporating modern luxury. It reopened in 2017, featuring 124 rooms and suites, including the opulent Le Grand Departement, designed by Karl Lagerfeld. Number one, the Gritti Palace, Venice, Italy. The Gritti Palace on the Grand Canal in Venice, Italy, is exactly what you'd imagine of a Venetian elegance, history, and hospitality. The amazing structure was built in 1525 when it was commissioned by the Doge of Venice, Andrea Gritti, as a private residence. Doge Gritti was an influential figure in Venetian history known for his diplomatic and political shrewdness. The palace was built on the site of an earlier structure belonging to the Paisani family, and it was designed to reflect the influence and power of the Gritti family. With an architectural style that's a beautiful example of Venetian Gothic with ornate facades, pointed arches, and intricate detailing, the palace has, over the centuries, undergone several modifications. The interiors were decorated with rich fabrics, Murano glass chandeliers, and priceless artworks, which further gives a sense of wealth and taste of its owners. It was in the 19th century that the Gritti Palace was converted into a hotel, attracting a clientele who appreciated its unique blend of history, luxury, and location. It quickly gained a reputation as one of Venice's premier hotels, hosting guests including royalty, artists, writers, and celebrities. Ernest Hemingway, in particular, had a deep connection with the place. He stayed there often during the 1940s and 50s, often writing in the hotel's bar, which has since been named after him. The hotel and its surroundings provided inspiration for his novel Across the River and Into the Trees, in which the palace is prominently featured. More recently, it's gone through an extensive renovation that's aimed to preserve its historical essence. It was completed in 2013, and it was done with focus on restoring original features and using traditional craftsmanship. The result is a seamless blend of historical spectacle and modern luxury, with each of the hotel's 82 rooms and suites offering a unique experience, and a series of restaurants such as the Club de Doge restaurant, which has become known as one of the best in all of Venice. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.